As a manufacturer, Unihertz has a history of producing designs that are very inspired by other designs, but in the past those have been largely based on phones you can't really buy new versions of anymore like the Blackberry. That isn't the case with this flashy guy, which is based on a phone that you can very much buy right now, the Nothing Phone 1. I'm Chris Wook, and this is Make Use Of Reviews from MakeUseOf.com. Today we're going to see what makes this phone tick and whether or not it ticks all the boxes to be the right phone for you. Now I have to admit I'm in a unique position reviewing this phone because I didn't really get caught up in the whole hype cycle of the Nothing Phone 1 like a lot of people did. As a matter of fact, there are so many phones these days, period. I knew it was there, but other than that I wasn't really aware of what it was aside from the flashy lights. What that means for you is that I'm not coming into this review with the same expectations another reviewer might have, but at the same time I've got to say, I don't plan to go easy on this one. Aside from those flashy lights, the design here is fairly close to the Nothing Phone 1, only bigger in a lot of different ways. By the way, you don't have to have these flashing all the time. I just did that for fun. See how fun this is? I'm having a great time. Even aside from those flashy lights, which I've turned off for now, the design's fairly close to the Nothing Phone 1, but that isn't the only phone they decided to clone, because if you look at that camera pod there, it's kind of similar to what you'd find on an iPhone 13 Pro. Just to make sure I wasn't missing anything before I started recording this, I looked at some other reviews out there for this, and one thing I notice almost nobody's talking about is how giant this phone is. I mean, look at that. Look at it. This phone is also really heavy. If you are on the road somewhere and you find you need a hammer, I'm not gonna say do it, but you, you could do it. Seriously though, this phone weighs around 300 grams, which is pretty heavy for a phone. Now we'll look at some reasons why it's so heavy later, including the massive battery, which is one of the best things about this phone. But it is heavy and it is big and I haven't got started yet. Not only is the phone big on its own, but it comes with this big old case that just adds to the bulk. If you like to really know a phone is in your pocket, like it's kind of pulling your pants down, this is the phone for you. There is one other issue with this phone aside from the general hugeness of it, and it's the power button. It's recessed in a way unlike all the other buttons on the phone, and what that means is it's hard to press. When you have the phone out of the case, it's relatively easy to press. Once you have the case on though, trying to press that power button is not easy. Oh jeez. Got it. Now let's get into the admittedly relatively underwhelming specs. This is powered by a MediaTek Helio G99 chipset that has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. That's not the most RAM or the most storage or the most processor, but it is par for the course for a mid-range phone. Maybe a budget phone. That is not as powerful as that nothing phone we keep talking about. I don't know why we keep talking about that. In Geekbench 6, the Unihertz Luna earned a single core score of 718 and a multi-core score of 2013, which is fine. In the 3D Mark Wildlife benchmark, the Luna earned a score of 1235 and an average frame rate of 7.4 frames per second. Now, no, that doesn't sound great, and it isn't, but when you're actually using the phone, it feels fine. The performance doesn't stutter. You can game on it if you're playing Genshin Impact or something like that. You're only gonna get around 30 frames per second, but it's playable. You're probably gonna run into the occasional game you can't play, but for a mid-range phone, it does what you'd expect from a mid-range phone. Part of the reason this phone is so big is the relatively massive 6.81 inch display. That comes with a resolution of 1080 by 2340 pixels. If you're expecting that buttery smooth 120 hertz variable refresh rate that you get on that nothing phone that we keep talking about for some reason, you won't find it here. I've heard that this has a refresh rate that goes up to 90 hertz, but I'm not sure I believe it. It feels closer to 60. It just doesn't have that smooth feeling you get from a higher refresh rate phone. One thing I recommend you do immediately is change the wallpaper. Look at that. Specs, displays, that's all boring. Who cares about that? Let's get back to what really matters about this phone. Those super fun lights. So fun. Well, they are so fun. 
Let's talk about what those lights actually do. So like the phone that this is clearly inspired by, the Luna will flash lights for your notifications and it will do music visualization. It also has a few other modes. For example, you can turn the lights on all the time if you want. Look at that, this lights all the time. If you look in the settings for the lights, you'll find numerous patterns you can enable, but these aren't actually patterns. They're just colors. You can even make your own pattern, but again, this is actually just selecting the color that the phone uses when it flashes that pattern. All the geometric patterns the phone seems to choose on a whim by itself. I'm not a very notification kind of person, so a long time ago, I set up some Android phone to not give me many notifications, and because Google is Google, every phone I've ever used since then that's an Android phone works that same way. So I never actually got the notification glyphs working on this, but that's simply because I didn't have notifications coming through. Now this could also be a problem with you. Fortunately, they've included a hierarchy of the priorities you need to set to get notifications making these light up. Is any of this practical? I don't think so. If you want a light to give you notifications, Android phones have had those for years. They're just tinier LEDs but that gets the job done. Is this unique? Sure. Have I ever wished a phone would do this? No. Do I want this phone to keep doing this now? No. I'll admit, I'm not sure how all these lights are coming through on camera, and I really hope I'm not messing up all my shots with that, but that is another problem with the lights on these phones is that I've got them the lowest they possibly go. At almost any other setting, they are impossibly bright and blown out. Look at that, it's great. I could do this all day. I have been doing this all day. This phone also has a few other features, one of which is puzzling and one of which is handy. The handy one is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there, meaning you don't need an adapter to plug in your headphones. The confusing one is the IR blaster. I'm assuming this is because there's infrared in this phone for another reason, which we'll look at in a little bit. But yeah, there's an IR blaster here just like a phone straight out of 2014. Do you ever want to use your smartphone to act as a remote for your TV? Does anybody? <laughs> Is that still a thing? That's a weird feature these days. Now looking at this totally unfamiliar brand new design and the camera bump, let's look at what the actual lenses are. You get a 108 megapixel main lens, a 20 megapixel night vision camera, and a two megapixel macro lens. Is anyone expecting the highest image quality out of this phone? Cause I really don't think so. It takes photos fine, but I doubt you'll find any photographers picking this phone up for its superior imaging quality anytime soon. That said, there is some fun to be had with this camera. One of the cooler features here is the infrared camera, which effectively gives you night vision. You can use this for still images, or you can use it for video. Of course, you can also shoot with it in the day, but it's not really gonna give you any extra visibility. It just makes everything look cool and inverted and kind of like an old heavy metal music video, which I like. Now, finally, we get to the best part of this being an absolutely massive phone, and that's the absolutely massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's 500 milliamp hours more than that other phone we keep talking about for some reason, but that's a small enough difference that it really doesn't matter. What matters is that this phone has a lot of battery life. Unless you're using those lights in always on or ambient mode all the time, this is gonna have a lot more life than Unihertz seems to plan on because in practice, those LED lights, they just don't come on that often. 5,000 milliamp hours is approaching small power bank size. So carrying that around in your phone is handy if you're willing to put up with the weight and the size. I'm not sure if I'm coming off overly negative about this phone because I really don't mean to be. It's more confusing than anything. This is kind of the phone equivalent of a parts bike. It's like Unihertz had a bunch of parts from other phones left over in their garage. They started throwing it together and they were like, hey, this looks kind of like that other phone people like. Let's put some lights on it and try to sell it. In a way that's fun, but it also leads to a phone that is just kind of fine everywhere and doesn't really stand out anywhere. If you're looking for a mid-range phone and you think those colors are cool, then this is probably for you, but I can't think of many people I would personally recommend it to. That said, if the phone equivalent of a parts bike sounds fun and appeals to you, 
it probably will be fun and probably will appeal to you and you should check it out. And that's about all we've got for you today on the Unihertz Luna. If you'd like even more in-depth information and specs, make sure to check out the full written review over at makeuseof.com. There's a link down in the description. Thanks to Unihertz for sending us this review unit. And as always, thank you for watching.